What's up guys, Tommy H here, and welcome back to another episode of the My Thoughts series. Today's battle is between two highly formidable dinosaurs. We have the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus going up against the Pachycephalosaurus from the Lost World. Now, both of these dinosaurs have been featured in Jurassic Park films already, but they are yet to really engrave themselves as iconic, consistently used dinosaurs. To me, that is unjust. The Pachycephalosaurus and Dilophosaurus bring many different aspects to these films, so, in the near future, I expect these dinosaurs to be used more often, especially in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Aside from all of that, let's begin the battle. To start things off here, we will have a size comparison between these two dinosaurs, so let's first examine the size of the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus. So the best size comparison we have here is when Nedry walked up to this dinosaur, waved the stick in its face, and here we can see a distinct size difference, Nedry of course being a fully grown adult, around 6 feet tall, and he is just skying over this dinosaur, making it look very small, so I would assume this Dilophosaurus, since it is around Dennis Nedry's waistline, might stand at around 3.5 feet, maybe even 4 feet tall, but that's being generous. As we all know though, size did not matter in this scene, Dennis Nedry did slip, this Dilophosaurus took that opportunity, turning a seamless scene into a very iconic one. Now, as a disclaimer, I would assume this Dilophosaurus was a juvenile. Historically, when fully grown, these dinosaurs stand at around 5 to 6 feet tall, but still, even as a juvenile, these dinosaurs remain dangerous. So now, let's examine the size of the Pachycephalosaurus. We got a much more clear, distinct size comparison of a fully grown adult and the Pachycephalosaurus in the Lost World. The Pachycephalosaurus is not too far off from the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus. The only difference here is their body structures. The Pachycephalosaurus is more compact, more stocky, and more muscular, and the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus is more lanky, not quite as stocky, and certainly a lot more loose. Now that we know their size, body structures, and all of that, let's move on to the abilities of these dinosaurs. So starting off with the Pachycephalosaurus, in a way, this dinosaur is kind of a one-trick pony in the sense that it only has one attack. Now luckily, that one attack is extremely effective. Just imagine a 4 foot tall, 1000 pound Pachycephalosaurus bolting at you at 40 miles per hour with essentially a rock on its head. If that connects, it is a guarantee that bones will break. And the way the Pachycephalosaurus charges may in fact be detrimental to the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus. What I mean by this is, most enemies go face to face, biting at each other, clawing at each other, all of that. And during that whole process, the Dilophosaurus is able to spit its venom, blinding its opponents, and eventually killing them off. Now, if the Pachycephalosaurus is charging, there is no spot to shoot the venom. The Pachycephalosaurus's eyes are down, away from all danger. Now, of course, fighting experience comes into play here, but once again, I do believe the Pachycephalosaurus has the edge here. On Isla Nublar in 1993, there was only a handful of dinosaurs on the island, and they were all separated by paddocks. During the Lost World on Isla Sorna, there were no paddocks, the dinosaurs were free, and the Pachycephalosaurus, like many other herbivores on the island, were in constant danger of getting taken out by a Spinosaurus, a T-Rex, or a Velociraptor. To give my final verdict, in close range, the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus most likely wins, the venom, the bite, the claws, all of that would take a toll after time, and the Pachycephalosaurus would get worn down, eventually dying. On the other hand, in a long range fight, the Pachycephalosaurus wins. If it keeps its head down, charges at the enemy, and makes contact, the Dilophosaurus will be broken, most likely having shattered bones, and this may cause internal bleeding. I will be linking a straw poll in the comment section below, so if you guys want to cast the votes, make sure to do so, and after voting, comment which dinosaur you picked to win. Leave that all in the comment section below, and if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe, and as always guys, leave a like, and have a nice day.